This is a beginner's guide to soldering electronics. So if you are thinking about giving soldering a try, uh, or if you've had a go at it and you're not very happy with the results you're getting, then this video is for you. I'm going to be going over all the equipment that you're going to need, such as soldering irons, solder and flux, and the important roles of all of these items. Uh, I'm also going to be going through some soldering techniques to ensure that you get neat, clean joints every time. One thing I want to mention is the pronunciation of the word solder. Some parts of the world say solder, some parts of the world say solder. Um, there is an argument to be made for each of those pronunciations based on the word etymology, um, but uh, at the end of the day, as long as we all know we're talking about the same thing, it doesn't really matter. A basic principle of any kind of soldering is to bond two things together using solder as the glue. Uh, but soldering electronics has the added requirement that that join needs to be electrically conductive. So looking at the equipment requirements, uh, you're going to need a soldering iron. Now they come in a variety of different uh, shapes and sizes and prices. Uh, you can get ones for just a few dollars and you can spend thousands on a soldering iron. Um, the cheaper type uh, generally have the mains power co cable coming right out the back of the soldering iron. Uh, they generally don't have any sort of temperature control. Um, and if you're lucky with those cheap ones, you might have a replaceable tip. Um, the next step up from those is to go with a soldering station, which uh, generally has a base station with a temperature control, and then the iron is connected to that base station. And uh, soldering stations usually have replaceable tips as well, and some of the better ones you might have a, a reasonable range of different types of tips as well. My recommendation for uh, for this sort of work is to go with a soldering station. I mean, they're a little bit more expensive than the basic soldering iron, but you can get them for quite cheap, uh, and it's much better to have that um, that temperature control on the soldering station. And as I say, um, you generally you're probably going to end up with um, a, you know better quality and finer tips on a on a soldering station as well. Um, now, I use a Hakko FX951 soldering station. They retail, retail for around about $500 uh, here in Australia, but I'm pretty sure you can get them for under $300 in the US. Um, they have the absolute worst interface, but the thing I really like about them is that you can actually remove the tips uh, in the middle of soldering. So uh, if we have a look here, I can actually lift that out and remove that tip even when it's hot. Uh, the difference with this soldering station is that the whole tip is the actual heater, um, whereas some of the cheaper soldering stations, um, the heater is in the handle, and then you just have a small bit of, uh, you have the tip which, which just sits in the top of that heater, and the, uh, the heater transfers the heat to that tip. Now, because these actually have the heater in the tip itself, uh, that's the much more effective heat transfer. Um, but it's only this end bit that gets hot. The base stays uh, cool. And so you can actually swap these out while you're in the middle of a soldering job. And, um, and I generally use, um, use only sort of three tips when I'm soldering. And they're just three different sizes of beveled edge tip. Um, and uh, I generally don't really like the conical tips, which is the pointed the pointed type which is a shame because most soldering stations come with a conical tip as standard and some of them uh, only have the option for a conical tip there's no uh, bevel tips even available for them um, so this is one of the things I really like about the uh, the Hakko station there are a huge range of tips available now even though uh, the Hakko is the soldering station I use every day I'm not going to be using it for this demonstration I am going to be using this POS soldering station that I picked up from my local electronics retailer for $29.95 and the reason I'm going to be using this is because I want to demonstrate that it is more about technique than it is about the equipment that you're using. Um, now I've never used this soldering station before, in fact I've never even taken it out of the box so it could be very interesting. 
So when it comes to the temperature I use for my soldering station, I generally set it at around about 400 degrees Celsius, which is about 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, now, the melting point of uh, leaded solder is about 180 degrees Celsius, so 400 might seem a little bit high. Um, but the thing is that, that I'm not just looking to melt the solder, I'm wanting to be able to transfer the heat from the soldering iron to whatever it is that I'm soldering. So that's why I have that temperature a bit higher. <clears throat> if I was uh, working with uh, lead-free solder, I'd probably be looking at about 450 degrees C or 850 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I'm not super fussy about it, near enough is good enough for me. Okay, so I've got my little soldering station all set up. Um, isn't it cute? It's got a tiny weeny little tip on the end of it. We'll see how it all goes. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is go over solder and flux and the relationship between the two. Um, so I'm just going to flick over to the microscope here. And if we look through here, I've got a piece of solder here. This is from a uh, uh, just a roll of solder and and if you have a look here, if I just grab a scalpel and I slice this through the middle, you'll see when we open it up that inside there, I'm just going to zoom in on that a little, there is a little channel of flux inside there. And so there is actually flux inside this solder. That's the flux there. Uh, and that just got to, gives you an indication of just how important flux is in the process of soldering, the fact that the solder actually has flux in it. Now, the purpose of flux is basically to help with the um, with uh, stopping the oxidization process or oxidation process depending on which part of the world you're from is how you pronounce it um, so any sort of metal I mean you'd be familiar with obviously when metal rusts that's the process of, um, of it oxidizing um, and solder oxidizes as well and I'm, I can actually demonstrate that here I'm going to grab my uh, soldering iron and I'm going to just let me zoom out here a bit I'm going to melt some solder onto the iron just like this okay so there's a nice shiny metallic blob of solder there it is there now the longer we let that sit I'm just going to grab a pair of tweezers here the longer we let that sit it will start to get this kind of crust on the outside and you can see there's a bit of a film and as we move it around it's sort of it's, you can see all these we're getting all these really ugly shapes on top of it at the moment here and this is all part of that process of oxidizing as the oxygen reacts with that metal <coughs> you start to get this film on the outside and then all of a sudden that solder is very hard to work with it's not going to do what you want because in order for solder to adhere to whatever you're wanting to solder <coughs> the uh, <coughs> both surfaces need to be you know really really clean and uh, and that includes um, sort of making sure that they're not oxidized so flux basically helps yeah uh, in that uh, in that process by stopping the oxidization of that metal on the soldering iron or on whatever you're soldering to so that, that solder will then adhere much easier now I'm going to get back to that a little bit in a little moment because I'm actually going to demonstrate the, that process to you. Um, but I, uh, <clears throat> I just want to talk about solders and flux. So this here, the solders basically come in two different varieties and that's leaded and lead free. Now this is actually a leaded solder. It's 60% uh, tin and 40% lead. Obviously as we know lead is a very poisonous substance so it's better uh, to, uh, to not actually have lead. Now having said that um, the leaded solder has a slightly lower melting temperature so it can actually be a little bit easier to work with and that's one of the reasons why I do tend to work with leaded solder um, though I am trying to wean myself off it. Um, so if you are going to be using leaded solder it's very important that you have lots of really good ventilation. Uh, you, I've got a little sort of uh, air filter. It's, it's not 
the best sort of air filter it's better than nothing but one of the things I tend to do is when I'm working I've got a fan here behind me <clears throat> and I just switch that on so that there's air blowing from behind me um, and it's just uh, you know blowing any of those fumes away from me uh, this um, uh, workshop that I'm in has actually got pretty good ventilation so um, <clears throat> Um, so yeah, so just obviously keeping in mind that if you are going to be using leaded solder, it is poisonous stuff. If you're going to be using lead-free solder, you have to keep in mind that it has a higher melting point. So your soldering station is going to need to have a little bit more uh, uh, higher temperature in order to melt the solder. Um, so now the next thing is flux. And again, fluxes come in a couple of varieties as well. Uh, they generally come in uh, active and passive varieties. Active solder, this is a, an active flux here. Uh, this one is, uh, um, is called uh, Baker's soldering fluid. And the, re the reason it's referred to as active is it is uh, acidic, it, it's it's corrosive, and so it is actually taking a layer off um, the, the the metals that you're using when you're soldering. Um, but the downside is that if you don't clean this off, it keeps corroding. And so you, if you're working with this with electronics, you can come back you know a week later and find that it's eaten through all of the wires, and then you know sort of, uh, and then it's not going to be good at all. So I, I would um, I would recommend staying away from this for electronics. Uh, once upon a time. I didn't realize that anything but this existed and this is all I used, but uh, there are lots and lots of different types of flux out there. So another sort you might find uh, is something like this, which is a, a Rosen flux. Now this is a passive flux and what that means is it's not uh, corrosive in the same way uh, that, that, uh, that, that the active um, is. And so you, um, you, if you leave it on whatever you're soldering it's not going to eat through the components <clears throat> still not bad not a bad idea to clean the stuff off after using it um, and of course again this stuff like all other things in this uh, hobby is poisonous so just you know you've got to be careful make sure you wash your hands or use protection whatever um, other different types of sold of flux you've got uh, this is one that I use regularly it's uh, Amtec NC559 V2TF uh, and it is another of the passive type uh, fluxes and it's a gel uh, and again this is one that you don't actually have to clean off after using uh, it's not you know sort of a non-corrosive um, and I say this is the one that I prefer to use but it's a little bit more expensive um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab just a little breadboard this is a breadboard here it's just sort of a um, a, a board for sort of prototyping electronics and if we have a look under the microscope you'll see that it is lots and lots and lots of little holes with little circles of little rings of copper around them and those rings of copper are for solder to adhere to. <coughs> now um, what I'm going to just demonstrate here I'm going to just grab a great big blob of solder big as I can carry on this little soldering iron something like that and then I am going to run it across some of these holes here now what you can see is that that solder is kind of congealing it's not flowing particularly well uh, and we you know ending up with this pretty revolting sort of shape and you might think well why on earth are you doing that anyway <clears throat> well I want to show you the difference of doing this when we're using some flux. So I'm now going to grab some flux. I'm going to grab, move up to a nice clean set of holes here, like there, and I'm going to put a great big mass, sorry, a mass of this flux on these holes. Heaps and heaps and heaps. And the reason I'm using so much is because I do want to demonstrate this point. I'm now going to grab, as a oh, wrong soldering line, sorry. I'm going to grab, um, a whole stack of solder like this onto the end of the soldering iron and I'm now going to do the same thing I did last time and I'm going to run them across here and what you can see you can see what happens here when I'm using that flux is we've ended up with a row of really nice neat little blobs <clears throat> uh, rather than this kind of smeary mess that I ended up with before uh, and obviously those blobs are much neater and tidier. 
Now I'm not necessarily saying that you do what I just did using loads and loads and loads of flux and nothing else, <clears throat> but it does demonstrate to you what a difference it makes when using flux when you're soldering because of the way it halts that um, oxidization um, and helps that um, you know that solder flow and form into nice little you know nice little blobs rather than sort of some big streaky mess. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the maintenance of your soldering iron. And the main thing is to make sure the tip is kept clean. Now, some people use uh, sponges with water, uh, but what I would recommend is uh, something like this. It's, uh, it's a little sort of uh, little container that's filled with like a steel wool. Um, and you basically get your soldering iron tip and you just stab it into that little mesh of, of metal and uh, that will clean that tip off and it'll get rid of any excess solder and it will just keep that tip looking nice and clean. So that's, that's my recommendation is to use one of these. You can actually get uh, replacements for these when they get old and tatty. Um, you just whip that out, chuck it in the bin and put a new one in. So that's basically what I use for keeping my uh, soldering iron tip clean and tidy. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention quickly was something that I'm going to be using in this next bit which is uh, uh, heat shrink. And heat shrink is basically just little tubes of, uh, of plastic uh, that, that come in a range of different sizes and colors uh, and you, uh, you use this to seal up any joins that you might do so that you can uh, um, uh, you can if rather than leaving any ex sort of exposed joins when you're joining up wires the heat shrink uh, covers that which means that the joins are going to last a lot longer this stuff you can just buy at electronic retails you can buy this stuff on eBay super cheap and as I say and this is a box with just a whole uh, a whole bunch of different sizes uh, which uh, has lasted me a very long time I have to say um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to uh, join a wire together. Um, so this is a wire that has come, uh, un, you know, has been uh, cut apart. Um, and uh, I'm just going to jump across here to the uh, to the microscope. You can see it's a really really ugly cut that's happened here, and we want to repair that and join them together. Um, now for what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to be using one of these which is a little articulated um, holder uh, that bends around and has little alligator clips on it that allow you to um, you know hold your um, whatever you're working with in in a nice steady position uh, because often often when you're soldering you've got one hand on the on the soldering iron you've got one hand on your solder and then you run out of hands for holding what it is you actually want to work on so that's where things like these these holders come in handy uh, you can also have if you're working on circuit boards there are also uh, things like this um, like a little rotisserie that allow you to put the board inside and then you you can stand it on there and you can spin the board around for working on it and holds it all nice and still so they're quite handy as well um, that is depending on the work that you're you're going to be doing so the first thing I'm going to do with this uh, this wire is I am going to clean up clean up these cuts because they are revolting. So I'm just going to cut that end bit off and I'll get this one and I will cut that end bit off. Right, so now we've got two nice uh, clean ends and then I'm going to be using a wire stripper like this one here. Just a really, uh, really basic one that uh, just allows me to put this into the right sized hole, let's say that one there and then just strip the wire off so then we got the, the wire strip there. Let's do the same for the other one strip that wire off like that. Let's get a little bit more okay now I'm just going to uh, just give the, the wire a bit of a twist uh, like this so it just holds those little uh, little bits of wire, the little pieces of wire together there. Okay, so now I want to join these two wires together. Now you might just say, okay, we'll put those two wires together and dump some solder on them. Um, that's generally not what I do when I'm, uh, when I'm soldering items like this. What I like to do first is I like to get solder on the two things that I'm planning to join. 
and then I melt them together. So let's start off with that. I'm going to just put this wire into the holder and I am going to there we go, get that nice and in focus. I'm then going to get some solder onto this wire. All right now, here's one of the the most important parts of the technique. Uh, and this is the mistake that a lot of people make when they're uh, first starting out with soldering. Uh, and the mistake they make is that they melt the solder onto the tip and then they try and transfer that solder onto the wire. That is absolutely not the way to do it. What you need to do, and this is, this is where that flux that's inside the solder is really important because that flux that's inside the solder only works at the time that it's melting. So once you melt it onto your tip, that flux is it's done its thing and it's no, of no use to you anymore. So you actually need to make sure that, that flux is being used when the solder is melting. So what you need to do, the correct procedure, is to use the soldering iron to get the wire hot. So this is, you're using the actual soldering iron to get the wire hot rather than melting the solder. Let me just clean this tip a little bit. It looks a little bit ugly. Okay. So I'm going to put him on there, and then what you do is you use the solder then, melt the solder onto the wire, not onto the tip. And as you can see, that burning, that smoke coming off, that is actually the flux. And that's showing you that that flux is doing its job. And so as you can see now, that wire is completely coated with solder, even if it is a little bit out of focus. It's completely coated with solder, and that's ready for us to do a join. So let's go through and do that one again with the other wire. So let's grab this second wire here um, and just again just let's get that all nice and in focus as best as we can. Once again soldering iron goes to the wire, gets the wire, tries to get the wire as hot as possible and then melt the solder onto the wire. There we go. And then any excess that you end up with on the tip uh, you're just going to clean that away with your uh, with your little uh, uh, tip cleaner, little mesh tip cleaner there. So now we've got two pieces of wire that have both got solder on them. So the next thing we're going to do now is, well, actually they're ready for joining, but if we were, this is just one piece of, this is a piece of wire that's not attached to anything for the purpose of this demonstration, but imagine for a second that it was attached to something at each end. So the next thing we would do is we would prepare by getting our uh, heat shrink ready to go, because once it's joined, if it's attached at both ends, you can't get that heat shrink on. So what we do is we grab a little bit of heat shrink, now you get a size, you want a size that is as close to the thickness of the wire as, as, as possible. So. If we just <clears throat> go under here, so this one is quite good, actually no, this one's a little bit, look, it's it's a very snug fit, this one, um, I, I think it would probably be okay, but I would rather actually go with a size, maybe one size up from that, just to make it a little bit easier um, for that to move around on the wire, so let's try this one, so this is the next size up, and you can see that one fits quite well there. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm just going to cut off a little bit of this. I don't need the whole thing, that's a little bit too long. Uh, I want a piece that is about the length of this join uh, plus the same amount on either side. So that's the join's going to be about that big, and then so if we go that same amount on either side, I'm probably going to be looking at, I'd say. It doesn't have to be precise, but I'm going to go with a length, say, I don't know, about an inch in length, or about maybe sort of two and a half, three centimeters. So <clears throat> there's a piece of, there's a little piece of, the light's not very good, a little piece of heat shrink there. And then what you do is you slip that over one of the pieces of wire. It doesn't matter which one, but you just got to make sure you keep it reasonably far away from the joint itself, because when this wire gets hot, if it makes that heat shrink melt, it will shrink prematurely which we don't want <clears throat> okay so I'm gonna now put the wire <clears throat> let me just move this out of the way I'm gonna put the wire into this holder I'm gonna use both sides of this holder of these alligator clips so that I can hold both of these in position for soldering now 
you may sort of not want to use, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, have both in the holder, you might just want one. But for what I'm demonstrating here, I'm going to put them both in the holder. I might have to spin it around. No, it's going to have to be that way. Going to fit? It's not going to fit. I'm going to put it that way. Right, so. <clears throat> here we have uh, two wires ready for joining. They've both got some solder on them. So I don't really need any more solder. Um, but if I wanted to, I could just grab some here at the same time to melt them. And then I've grabbed the wrong soldering iron again. Let's try this one. Um, and then we apply the heat to the area and then just melt those two together. There we go. Look at that. Okay. So obviously making sure that it cools. Don't pull them apart too early, otherwise the, the solder won't have cooled. But here you can see that that's cooled and it's solidified. And we've now got a nice, neat and tidy join there. And you'll find that that join is probably stronger than the wire itself. If I was to actually grab those and pull them apart, it would probably break somewhere else before it broke at that join. Okay, so the next thing to do <coughs> is to apply that heat shrink. So I've got my, um, I've got my join here. Uh, let me just do that. I've got the join, and then I've got the heat shrink over the top. Now let's uh, jump across now. I think it'll be easier to look at this camera for this. So that's the join there, and that's it there. Now, when it comes to shrinking the heat shrink, you can do it any number of ways. Um, you, I sometimes use a, a hot air rework station that blows out hot air, or you can use a hot air gun, um, but you can just use a little Bic lighter if you want. So if I just grab this, just gently run the heat backwards and forwards over there, you can actually see that that is making that shrink, that heat shrink shrink down. It's also getting a whole stack of black burn all over it because I'm using a lighter. It's not the cleanest way to do it, but it, it, it does work. Um, as I say, I would typically use a, um, you know, sort of a hot air uh, rework station. And what that does is that shrinks that heat shrink down to size. And then once it cools, it then goes hard. And if we go back to our microscope, you can see that I've, my light has melted my wire a little bit there. But it, the most important thing is that is now sealed. So that is you know, sort of a nice, neat and tidy joint that you can uh, uh, you can have in whatever you're working with. Um, and that's not going to come apart because uh, it's all sealed up. It's not likely to ever uh, corrode. So um, so that's that's basically that. So that's, you know, sort of just demonstrating doing a wire joint. And as I say, the most important part with that is making sure that you heat what you're wanting to solder and then you melt the solder to the component or to the, the part that you're soldering rather than onto the iron. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, demonstrate uh, soldering a component onto a board. And I'm going to do that by just grabbing a uh, little nondescript resistor here. There we go. Any old resistor. This is a resistor. This is the board that I'm going to mount it onto. And so uh, if we look at this, you can see all, all the little holes here. And let's just say I was building an electronics kit or something like that. So I basically bend the, uh, bend the pins of the resistor. I'm going to turn this off here so we can see that. Bend the, uh, bend the pins of the resistor here um, and then poke them through the holes of the board like so. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the resistor sitting in the uh, sitting on the board there, and then on this side, I would generally grab a you know sort of a pair of pliers or something like that, and just gently, not hard, but just gently grab this wire, pull it a little bit, and bend it, and then grab this side, pull it a little bit, and bend it. And those bends are now stopping it from from falling out, so that's going to stay in place while we do the soldering. So, and there's our uh, little wires that are bent there. So let's jump back now to the microscope and we will have a look and there's our, there's wire number one and there's wire number two. And I am now going to just solder these wires in place. So we'll start with this one, grab my trusty soldering iron and again, applying the heat to the components you want to solder to and then melting onto those components. Now 
this is really where I was referring to the difference between a conical tip and a uh, and a um, beveled tip. Now, if I show you a bevel tip, I'm going to show you a great big bevel tip, but it's just for the purpose of demonstrating. So this is a bevel tip here, and you can see that you've got this great big flat surface. And what I like about these is you can apply them like this and apply a large surface area of heat down onto any board that you might be working with. But uh, with the uh, the fine point tip like this one, uh, you have more trouble getting the heat where you want it to go. Now uh, what you could do is you can maybe lie this down so you get a little bit more surface area uh, of the iron onto what it is you're trying to solder to. So anyhow, I'm just going to hold that there. That's applying some heat uh, to the uh, to the pad and to the wire and then just going to grab this and melt and melting onto the pad and onto the wire and there we go and as you can see we've got a lovely neat clean tidy little blob going on there and then just a matter of clipping the excess of that wire off so that's that and there you have a lovely clean solder joint going on there let's just zoom out all looking lovely neat and tidy so let's do that again on the, on the other end so we've got we've got the soldering iron we hold that onto the um, the copper pad and we're holding it onto the wire as well to try and transfer heat to both and then we just get the solder we melt that it's melting onto the pad and melting onto the pin as well. So, there we go, another lovely, neat and tidy ball. Oop, let's just cut that off, cut off the excess. And there we go, once again, another neat and tidy sort of ball there. Now, I've done that without any flux at all, other than the flux that was in the solder. Um, so, uh, so what I would recommend with that is, you know, sort of to probably use things like a, you know, a breadboard like this to practice, try and practice getting nice blobs when you're soldering like that. And keep in mind that I'm using a 29.95 soldering station here. So it's not all about having fancy equipment. There we go. Nice beautiful little blobs of solder and I'd recommend just sort of practicing uh, practicing that. So that's basically it for this as a beginner's guide. I'll probably uh, do another video later on that goes into, into some uh, more advanced soldering so perhaps you know soldering some uh, ICs onto boards or um, you know some uh, some smaller components um, but just as a, a basics a beginner's guide uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to uh, all I wanted to show um, please feel free to leave comments uh, or if there's anything else you would like me to demonstrate uh, just put in a request and I'll uh, I'll see what I can do so uh, thanks for watching